So let me guess, you're probably just like me, you probably have the free version of DaVinci Resolve, but even if you have the paid version, you make your YouTube videos, you're getting really used to, really good at editing your videos, you don't want to learn an entire new program just to make your YouTube thumbnails. Well, don't go anywhere, don't buy any other software, don't spend a ton of time learning about it, because you can do all of your amazing YouTube thumbnails right here in DaVinci Resolve. Now, obviously you see the thumbnail to this exact video right here. I'm gonna show you some of these techniques right here that I use to really make these thumbnails pop. And of course, like I said, you can use any type of technique that you know of in DaVinci Resolve to really make your YouTube thumbnails exactly the way that you want them. So if you already know all this stuff and you just wanna to jump to the end and see exactly how to export the actual picture you use for the YouTube thumbnail, I wouldn't blame you, I'll put a timestamp in the description, but let's jump into some of these techniques now that my bald head is out of the way. Now just for a couple tips, I always edit my YouTube thumbnails in a smaller size like this. You could go ahead and full screen, but remember, nobody looks at your YouTube thumbnail this way, so I wouldn't edit it to look great in this frame anyways. Remember, the thumbnail is gonna be like, I don't know, about this big on PC, and it's gonna be about this big on somebody's phone. So make sure you edit it so that it looks good in those formats. First up, just imagine this is for some nature channel, and this is a thumbnail about a volcano. Now, how can we make this text pop more? First off, of course, you can go ahead and change the color. Let's say you have some color scheme that is works great for your channel. Perhaps you always use this color yellow, and just changing the color, simple as that, you know, depending on what your background is, could really make your text pop out much better. Now, another way to make the text pop off the screen a little bit better, you can go ahead over to open effects and you can scroll down or use the search bar right here. Type in drop shadow, drag and drop that onto your text. Now, right off the bat, it already popped out slightly, giving that contrast between the light text and there is that light background, but just giving a dark contrast in the middle there. But what I always do is I go ahead up here in the inspector, turn the intensity up to make that, and then go ahead and slide it closer to the text. And usually I'll turn the blur down. You see all the way down, it literally just makes the letter look exactly like that or blur it way out. I'll bring this quite a bit down and then bring it even closer. And you can see right there, the text instantly becomes way more readable. Next up, imagine your YouTube channel is about football, NFL football, all right? Now, this might be the background you wanna use, but noticing that the people in the foreground and the background are in the same focus, it's kind of, a, I don't know what you'd call it, a little bit jarring perhaps, because that's not the way usually it would look if you have one of the expensive cameras the background will be kind of out of focus and the foreground will be in focus. So easy way to do that over here, go to open effects, Gaussian blur, drag that and drop it onto your background. Boom, instantly a slight blur to the background and then your foreground is in focus. Up in the inspector here, you can slide to the left or right depending on how much you want the blur to be. That looks good right there. Background's blurred out as if we have one of those expensive cameras that we took a picture of this. Now imagine you're doing a gaming channel and right here we've taken advantage of a couple of the techniques we've already used. We have the drop shadow there actually on the arrow and we have bright colored text. You can see right here to kind of stand out a little bit more, but let's make this text stand out even a little bit more. When you have it selected, come up into the expector under titles, click on shading and actually go to this number two right here under select elements. Right here it says red outline, but I'm just gonna utilize really the outline in general. So check enable and you see the text right there instantly it popped up that red outline. You can change the thickness here, depending on, well, how thick you want the outline to be. Uh, you can leave it red if you want to. You can change it to any color you want to right here in the color selector. I go ahead and just do it with black. That just makes it kind of stand off the background a little bit more. But if you really want it to pop, like I said, experiment around with any color you want to use. Now, if you're using the thumbnail to where you actually want to focus on something that is part of the background, and right here, it is this red portal, but everything else on the screen all over here underneath the text is not important. You can actually use something called a zoom blur. It's under open effects right here. We're going to drag it and drop it down onto the background, and it didn't really do exactly what I wanted. You see, actually, the portal that I didn't want blurred is kind of blurred, so come up in, into the inspector, select effects, and then you want to go ahead and move the position this way. An easier way to change it, Check this drop down, go to open effects, and then you can see exactly where the center of the zoom blur is. We're gonna put it exactly on the object that we do not want to be blurred. We're gonna turn the blur up here in order to just kind of see where exactly it's doing its job at. And then we're gonna go ahead and center exclude. So this is gonna make the center of the zoom not be zoomed at all and then kind of expand it out. Looks like it's a little bit drastic over there. Boom, right there you can kind of see it. What we actually wanna look at here is unblurred and then behind the text is actually blurred. 
just giving it more separation between the background and the text. So we'll go ahead and remove that real quick. Now, one more technique here to give you separation between your main object, which right here is the text and your background. It could be a person as well, or literally any object. Now go over to open effects. Once again, we're going to type in vignette. We typed in VI and it popped right up here. We're going to drag it, drop it, boom, right there. And what it literally is, is kind of a halo effect. It slowly gets darker to the edges based upon how far it is away from the center of wherever this vignette is. Now we don't want it right in the middle though. So we're going to come up in the inspector, go to advanced. And then because we have open effects right here selected, it has a very similar right here crosshairs to where it is actually going to have lit up. So we're going to put that about right on the portal we want. And you can go ahead and change the size. And that's just going to make it so the rest of the thumbnail is darker, things you don't want the people to focus on. And it's going to focus mainly on the one object you do want them to look at. Of course, making the text pop even more over here. Now we got the thumbnail exactly the way we want it. How do you actually export it in order to be able to use it? So I'm going to show you two different ways, depending just on what you prefer. One incredibly easy way right here. Come up to the top, click on file, come down to export right here. And then over in this drop down, it says current frame as a still. Easy enough. Click right there, pick your title. And I usually export as JPEG. You can do PNG or Pick any file you want to mess around with it, experiment, I suppose. But if I pick PNG, the file size is too big and YouTube will not accept it. If you picked JPEG, YouTube will accept it. So that's the one I go with. Click export. And then I'll go ahead and bring it up right here. There is the thumbnail for our gaming channel, if that is what you're doing. So that's more of a newer way to do it. I've been doing it the old way through the color tab for so long that I kind of still do it this way, just out of habit. But you can come over to color tab right here. You can right click, grab still. And boom, you see it up in the right hand corner and you see all the other thumbnails I've made for other DaVinci Resolve videos. Then you right click on that export and it's exactly the same here. You can go ahead and type your title, pick what your file type you want to be and go ahead and click export. That's how you make thumbnails. But if you want to see how to save a ton of time when you're editing videos, make sure you check out this video right here on how to utilize adjustment clips in your projects.